I can honestly say that um, given the kind of season that we've had, you know, I thought I'd pretty much seen it all, but this was a, this was a rather new experience for me. Um, it, it was, um, <clears throat> you know, it was what we thought it would be. It was going to be really difficult. It was going to be really ugly looking and it was, you know, it was, and um, we could just as easily um, let that game get away from us, um, and we didn't. And there's something to be said for that, <clears throat> that you can win a game that you probably um, – you probably will look back and say, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure <clears throat> how we won that game. But we did. And um, Kristen um, and AZ were really tough down the stretch. And Kristen played like the kind of senior you need to be uh, at this time in, in her career. Um, <clears throat> so um, we need to be a lot better on Saturday. That's for sure. <clears throat> I, have a certain, I have a certain vision of how the game is played. And for 30 some years, we played the game that way. And tonight we didn't play the game that way, not even close. So, you know, I'm experiencing things this year I've never experienced before. Um, and I guess, you know, um, it's supposed to make me a better person. Um, I mean, I feel invigorated just walking up here I feel like I just got back from, you know, visiting Cat Stevens and, you know, seeing uh, things I've never seen before. Yeah, I feel so by going through that, I think I'm a changed person. Do you know the bottom line? You've you won, like you said in your opening statement. Is, is there some added value in having to grind out a game like that heading towards a regional or nearly? you're kind of breezing through this round. I wonder if this is like, well, it wasn't aesthetically pleasing, so just put it out of your mind or if there's some additional value to going through an experience like this. Um, <clears throat> I, think, I think there's always value uh, when you have to struggle to get something, you know, not that there isn't and, you know, playing exceptionally well and, you know, winning by a lot because you executed great and, you know, there's obviously value in that as well. But I, I do think at this time of the year, um, those games are should be an exception rather than the rule. Um, over the years, you know, we've kind of made it seem commonplace. But, you know, if you look around the country, uh, these games are supposed to be difficult. They're supposed to be tough. Um, and you do learn a lot. Uh, you find out a little bit about yourself and that, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to shoot, you know, 60% from the floor to win a game. You, um, you know, you, we outscored them by 20, you know, we got down eight and then we got up 12. So obviously we did a bunch of really good things to do that. And then, you know, we did what we do this year and, and we allowed ourselves to do what we do and made it very difficult on ourselves. Um, so there's a lot to be gained by, you know, realizing that, yeah, you can do two things. You can play really, really well and get up a bunch and then you're capable of doing things that let the game get back to three. And knowing that, I think, is is valuable, for sure. Coach, you knew you were expecting a, a physical game here. Um, how much did Nika and Aliyah having those two players on your team help you uh, get past this game? And was it what you expected? Was it more than you expected in terms of physicality? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I I think they're you know they're both young kids. You know, they both play with a with a lot of passion, you know, they want to, 
you know, they want to be good. They want to play hard. They want to compete. And, um, you know, <clears throat> there's going to be a learning curve where you have to learn how to do that without getting yourself, you know, on the bench with five fouls or in Nika's situation, you know, committing a couple of fouls that are absolutely crucial, you know, one second left on a shot clock where a kid's taking a shot that has no chance to go in and you, you give them two free throws. So, you know, part of the growing process is how do I, how do I keep doing the great things that I do and how do I eliminate, how do I not let my strength, which is how hard I play, you know, um, be a detriment sometimes to the way, the way I play for our team. So uh, I wouldn't trade those guys for anybody in the world. And, you know, we need them playing. We don't need them on the bench with fouls, you know? So I think Saturday, you know, both of them are, are going to be even more important than they were today because, you know, Saturday's game is going to be in some ways. It'll be different, but it'd be tougher. Do you know 32 minutes today for Paige? Uh, figure you probably didn't want a player that you probably didn't want a player that much, but she gave you an, an awful lot and she poised when you needed it out there. Um, I mean, I don't expect Paige to play great. You know, I don't care if we play 35 more games, you know, in the next three weeks. Um, I think the expectation level for me is really, really low, given, you know, how much time she sat out, given what she's coming off of. Um, so, you know, those moments that she has that are really, really good, I'm happy, I'm thrilled for her. But, um, you know, there's still a lot going on out on the court that you can see that's not it's not the same player that that we saw, you know, all of last year. And and, um, <clears throat> you know, but having her on the court obviously benefits us in so many ways. And um, um, <clears throat> the fact that I had her on the floor for 32 minutes says says something, you know. You, you, just, you mentioned the fouls that Nika had. Is that the reason she didn't play in the second half? No. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, every time you put somebody in the game, you have to take somebody out. And um, um, today I just made that decision. It was nothing that Nika did that um, we needed more. We needed, we needed somebody who's a scorer. Like, we didn't need anybody to help us play better defense tonight. Obviously, she came in the second quarter. I mean, the whole second quarter, she played almost. And, you know, she was instrumental in changing the tempo of the game. Um, but I just felt like we needed offense and um, nothing nothing against Nika at all. Gina, did you think your team kind of responded to the tone of the game in a, in a positive way, like just the way that they were kind of going out with that aggression and toughness and trying to punch back, especially with uh, that one play where Paige was tussling with the ball. And then, yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, we all, we all have this vision of what, what toughness is, you know, and um, some people think it's, you know, you have making a show of how tough you are by how you, how you act or what you say or, you know, your posturing and whatever. Um, or you knock somebody on their ass and it's a foul and you think, yeah, I'll show you. That's tough. You know, I thought the first quarter, primarily, we were so hyped up. I think between what our students did today, which is unbelievable, right? Right? They made it feel like, you know, um, an extra special game. They, I think they... You know, they reminded everybody why Connecticut basketball is Connecticut basketball and why our fans are viewed the way they're viewed, you know. Uh, but I think it also got us so amped up that we, you know, shots that we normally make with our eyes closed in other games, we struggle with. So we, it took us a while to settle in to the, the pace of the game. Toughness is making all those free throws at the end, making eight free throws. Toughness is getting a huge rebound at a big time, you know. Um, toughness is Kristen making that three when she had to make it. 
And I think we showed that. I think all the other stuff was just fluff. <laughs>